In this video, we look at the trapezoidal rule, and this is the fourth video in a four-part video series of the subtopic of integral calculus. So we're currently in topic five calculus in the AI course. In topic five, there are two main subtopics, differential calculus and integral calculus. Now in the first video in this video series on integral calculus, we talked about how the whole idea of this subtopic is finding the areas under curves. So for example, if we have this curve here, we can find the area underneath it using definite integrals. And in videos two and three, we went through how do we do that. But what if we didn't have the equation of this curve? Or what if the equation of this curve was very complex and we couldn't anti-differentiate it. Well, this video is about, we can approximate the area by setting up a series of trapezoids, finding each of their areas, and if we added up all of their areas, we would get a pretty good approximation of the area under the curve. So for example, this curve here, I'll just draw this in blue. If we didn't know the equation to this curve, we could set up a series of trapezoids, find all of their areas, add them up. It wouldn't be exactly correct because there's a, there's a little bit of gap here between the tops of the trapezoids and the curve. Or in this case here, there's actually a gap below the top of the trapezoid and the curve, but it's a pretty good approximation. Now, just to recap what a trapezoid is, and, and you probably saw this back in your earlier years of mathematics, usually you'd see it uh, in this format here where the two parallel sides are horizontal and the area of this trapezoid has this equation here. But try to visualize this trapezoid rotating 90 degrees and now the two parallel sides are actually running vertical and the height of the trapezoid is now actually the width of the trapezoid. And this would still be the, the formula for the area of this, but try to visualize the parallel sides going upwards and the width being sort of side on, but still having the letter H. Now, instead of adding up all of the areas of the trapezoids, we actually have a rule that adds them all up in one go. And this is the formula here, and I'll, I'll circulate this. I'll, this is an important formula. So we have this formula here. Now let's talk about some of its components. So it reads the integral from the left-hand side or the lower boundary A to the upper boundary B of some sort of curve, which we don't know the equation of, can be approximated as, so it's a half multiplied by H, where H is the width of one trapezoid, multiplied by, and then we have a bracket here, and, and there's two, two brackets inside it, but the first bracket is Y0 plus YN. Now Y0 is the height of the left-hand side of the left-hand trapezoid. So that would be this height here, that's Y0 and yn is the right-hand version of that. So it's the right-hand side of the right-hand trapezoid, so this height here. And then we close that bracket plus two times, and all of these y values here are the internal heights. So for example, this would be y1, this would be y2, this would be y3, and so on and so on. Now the formula has dot, 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 because it doesn't know how many trapezoids you have. You could have three, you could have 100. So it just says, well, just add up all of the internal heights. Okay, so let's practice that now with this example. I have this curve here, and I don't know the equation of this curve, but I do know some coordinates that it passes through. So I can, I can actually create a series of trapezoids here. So this will be the first one, this will be the second one, third one, fourth one, so there's, we have five trapezoids and I have the coordinates of each of these. So for example, this first coordinate has an X value of one and it has a Y value of 18. And the right hand one would have a X value of five and it has a Y value of 50. So you can see this 50 here. So let's now approximate the area of this gray shaded region. It would be the area from one to five of this curve, which we don't know, so y dx is equal to, now let's have a look at the formula. It's a half times h, so a half multiplied by h, where h is the width of one of these trapezoids. Now we need to figure this out. This second line here has an x value of 1.8. So this here is 1.8. So therefore this width is going to be between 1 and 1 1.8. So therefore the width is going to be 0 0.8. So this here will be 0 0.8. Now we open up our brackets. 
we have y0 plus yn. So the height of the left-hand side of the left-hand trapezoid, that's this height here, and that is 18, plus yn, which is the height of the right-hand side of the right-hand trapezoid, that is 50. Close that bracket, plus two times all of the internal heights. So that will be, and I'll just create some room here, that will be 19.28 plus 23.12 plus 29.52 plus 38.48. They're all the heights of these vertical lines. I'll just pause the video and write those in. Okay, I have those there. I can then use my calculator to find out what that is equal to. Now, I just want to be clear, this is actually an approximation. My equals, that should have actually been approximate there instead. So this will approximately equal, and we can use our calculator to find out what this is equal to. I've entered that there. You can see, matches up with what I have there. Hit enter, and we get 115.52, or rounded to three significant figures, 116. So there's an example that we estimated the area under the curve using the trapezoidal rule with five trapezoids. And then usually in exam questions, they would then, in the next part, give you the equation of the curve. You would need to compare the exact answer using a definite integral with the approximation and then maybe find the, perc uh, the percentage error. But there we have it. That's the trapezoidal rule. I recommend going and practicing some of these questions over in the question bank.